Listen, my diet, my diet's a disaster again. Ooh, are we do a food section? I'm just gonna say this one quick because it is the one I make every year. Uh, the mm. only time I've Tell successfully reined in my diet is when HBO was hanging over my head like a sword of Damocles. <laughs> and uh, I just can't live like this anymore. I can't. I can't have so many Snickers ice cream bars. And you know what? You have Snickers ice cream bars? Ronan. Okay. Those Ronan bought a box of five, a ate one, and left town. John. What kind of monster? John. I love Snickers ice cream bars. I want to credit you for having Snickers ice cream bars. I wrote down, I want to eat worse, smarter. Okay? Oh, if I'm home alone in my house, interesting. I interesting. will have five peanut butter spoons without thinking twice about it. That is a thoroughly disgusting habit. <laughs> we are all being we're all being quite a bunch of charlottes right now. <laughs> that is that is like eating an entire <laughs> chocolate. I don't get what that means. That's like eating a whole cake. It's a, it's okay to have a, a Snickers ice cream bar. It's yeah. okay to have wings for lunch along with your sandwich if it was an accidental order like <laughs> I just did. I ate a right? whole pizza for lunch. That's true. An intrepid reporter had asked many of the Democratic candidates for what their comfort food is. Here are some of the answers. Cory Booker's comfort food was veggies. <laughs> Boo! What are you talking about? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's not. And you know what? Yeah, you're vegan, and you like, like all the great vegans, you make us aware of it. I live in Los Angeles, all right? There's plenty of vegan comfort food in this city. There's vegan macaroni and cheese. There's vegan meatloaf. They make anything vegan now. It is 2019. We can, we can wield God's creation into unholy, unholy food items. Meat made of cashews, it's possible. John Delaney, grilled chicken sandwich from McDonald's, no sauce, but, now grilled not fried, but he said this, two of them. And you know what? <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. Because, because any true McDonald's connoisseur knows you get a meal and one little thing. <laughs> Andrew Yang, kind bars, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> kind bars are the veggies of the bar community. <laughs> Bernie Sanders said, last time out, we did a trip to the West Coast, and I gained three pounds in four days, so it's too much comfort food. You know what? It's not an answer, but it's charming. <laughs> Marion Williamson said, I have no comfort food. <laughs> fucking A-plus answer. She's like, you fucking earthlings and your... <laughs> and your, and your inability to manage your human emotions. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg said, beef jerky. Come on, Pete. <laughs> beef jerky is not comfort food. It's not. It's like the opposite of comfort food. It's what you're supposed to eat on a horse. <laughs> comfort food's what you have when you get back from the week of being on the horse eating beef jerky. It's the stew and the bowl at the ranch. <laughs> to, weave, to weave a tale about it. And then Eric Swalwell said, it's really a comfort coffee. My favorite coffee is a mocha. You're not going to win the Midwest with that shit. <laughs> Every time Love It or Leave It or Pod Save America goes to the Midwest, I gain eight pounds. Not three, not five. I gain eight fucking pounds. You cannot communicate with these people if your comfort food is a cafe latte. What would your comfort food be? Oh, wow. Let's judge you, sir. I want to tell you a story about what it really means to have comfort food. <laughs> and it's going to a pizza place in West Hollywood alone, ordering the pizza, eating the pizza, walking out of the pizza parlor, realizing it was next door to a Five Guys, walking into the Five Guys, getting a cheeseburger fully fucking loaded, eating that cheeseburger, all right? You don't come at me about comfort food. All right, John, this one, next one's for you. Sure. Um, in honor of going to Boston in a few weeks, the world wants to know, what's your regular Dunkin' Donuts order? And will you be getting it there? 
Disgusting. I'm just gonna. This is just gonna feed all the tweets. Uh, it is a large French vanilla. Mm. <laughs> what am I? Hey, where are we going? Paris? I can't do the accent. Paris? Large French vanilla skim milk. That's it. No, no sweetener, though, because that would be too much. Well, the French <laughs> vanilla is sweet. The French vanilla is sweet. I know. that was Skim a milk <laughs> is disgusting. Shame on you for getting skim what? milk. Now, skim milk is a problem? Skim now? milk is terrible. It is terrible. It is not good for you. It's not healthier. It doesn't taste better. It is stupid. Skim milk is a vengeful scam from the low-fat era of the fucking food pyramid. It's got to go. Okay. It's got to go. Stop putting skim milk in your coffee. It's not a diet food. All right? It's basically just carb water. Ham Get egg, it out of there. Ham, egg, and cheese and an English muffin, too. That's a breakfast. Ooh. From Dunkin' Donuts. That part's fine. What's it like sharing an office? I'm just wondering. It's uh, every day is a new joy. <laughs> okay, well, also, we have a lot of big stories today. A lot so of big lot stories, of big stories like today. It's like a little preview of a newsletter. That's why we got the large Diet Cokes. <laughs> No, thanks to Garage. Um, so no, no. So, what in the document? Sorry, sorry. Oh. Can't get Diet Cokes. Sure, I'm an intern, but I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> too, too busy. Too busy, honestly. You know what? I was an intern once, and someone said to me, get Diet Cokes. You know what I did? I said, sure. I sure. Not, sorry, I got a lot on my plate right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. He did. He really did have shit to do. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, was, what was the next question? Was done hazing oh our phenomenal interns. Um, this landed on cheese curds. Guys, these things are fantastic. And, and you need to get some confidence, get some, get some, get some, uh, get a meeting together, meet with some of the other Green Bay Packers owners, take a little bit of that money you were gonna use to buy more paper stock, invest in some way to take Wisconsin milk convert it into cheese curds, and sell it across the country. There is no reason that I have to come here to eat them. This is America. We get everything everywhere now. Every store is the same. Every city is the same. There is nothing special about any local place anymore. That's the bargain we made, all right? We all shop at the same online store. We go to the same 14 fucking restaurants. They all should be selling cheese curds. At some point, due to consolidation, economic dislocation, of a rot inside of the culture, we decided that literally 100% of our cities will be identical. I don't like it, but it's the world we live in. So here are the choices we now have. Cheese curds nowhere, or cheese curds everywhere. And all I'm saying is, all right, there are some ways in which I have benefited from this new world, one of which is there's literally no restaurant left that does not serve spinach and artichoke dip. I don't know why that happened. I don't get it, but I love it. And I see no reason why in the phone book that is the Cheesecake Factory's menu, there isn't a beautiful little line that says Wisconsin cheese curds. Think of how proud you'll be. They make mozzarella sticks look like mozzarella dicks. They are so much better. It's a subtle difference, but it, but it counts. Best fast food items that exist. And I'm gonna start with the controversial one, all right? Mm -hmm. Because it, this is not about politics. Chick-fil-A spicy chicken sandwich. Delicious. Mm -hmm. KFC chicken. Got some tweets about that. Uh, Taco Bell Double Decker Taco Supreme, uh, McDonald's Chicken Nuggets, McDonald's French Fries, Shake Shack Cheese Fries, Shack Burger, oh my God. Uh, Domino's Hand Toss Pan Pizza, that's eight, uh, KFC Chicken, did I say KFC Chicken? KFC Chicken you belongs to- You did, you said it. Oh shit. Hand Make and Cheese on English Muffin, Dunkin Donuts. Shut the, that is, get the <laughs> fuck out of here with that ten. microwave <laughs> bullshit. Every day. That is- <laughs> I would eat it every day. You do eat it every day. I don't, I stop. What Stopped am I after missing? I've ever everyone shamed my breakfast choices. Popeye's biscuit. Thanks for the reusable K cup that's on Popeye's the fucking center of media. Yeah, you should use that reusable K cup. <laughs> Eating that bullshit. It's like little sip of water out of it. <laughs> There's a tenth. There's a tenth favorite fast food item. Did you talk about uh, Popeye's chicken sandwich? Uh, no, I'm a KFC chicken Popeye's biscuit person. Okay, okay. Boston Market. Boston Market. Uh, Boston Market. <laughs> I will say, I well, will we're say. Talking. 
Love some Boston Love market. Love a Boston market. Sides. Love a Boston market. That is great that mash, cornbread. Great stuffing. That cornbread, that mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is great. Let me tell you a little tip. All right. There's a little tip from an expert. There. You take a little Cholula hot sauce, which they have at Boston Market, especially if you dine in, and uh, you just add that right to the mac and cheese. You mix it up. Huh. Any Sparrow lovers? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, look at the different kinds of food we haven't talked about. Yeah, Pizza, you know, what's the, what's uh, uh, I believe Domino's? I think that the Domino's hand hand tossed pan pizza is the best of the fast food pizzas. I do believe that. And if you know, if you're looking for recommendations, salami, banana, peppers, and spinach. Just gonna throw it out there for people. Mm-hmm. Very specific. Very specific. What about Taco Bell? You, I, you I, do no, go to breakfast double, at Taco Bell. <laughs> I love a double decker Taco Supreme because it's a Taco Supreme wrapped inside he's a, of he's a, a fucking savant. <laughs> the Taco Bell double decker Taco <laughs> Supreme. The Taco Bell double decker Taco Supreme is one of the best. It's the best. One of the best values in the business. Let me tell you something about it. <laughs> it was because here's the thing. Here's the thing about like, it. it. Here's the thing about it. All right. The thing about a Taco Bell taco, first of all, fundamentally, there's a problem at Chipotle. There's a problem at Taco Bell, which is they put the cheese on after the, like, very late in the game. And it's like, get the cheese right on that fucking meat so that it melts. What are we doing here? What kind of corporation doesn't crack this code? But the problem with the Taco Bell Taco Supreme is um, it breaks as you're eating it. And so, like, you actually need to lay something down beneath it to catch. You can basically, if you eat three Taco Supreme, when you're done, there's another Taco Supreme at the bottom before that you could just eat. But with the Double Decker Taco Supreme, it is wrapped in a soft flour tortilla and beans that keep it so contained. It is such an unmessy food. It's just an, an unrelated reminder. William Barr will not be going after states that did legalize marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> keep talking. End of stream. <laughs> <laughs> There was only one good period in American history. It was a six month period during the dot com boom, <laughs> all right, in which the economy was flourishing, and America was told that in order to lead a healthy and fulfilling life, they had to eat six to 10 servings of carbohydrates every single day. The First Lady, the FDA, the Surgeon General, Kellogg's, <laughs> Snackwell's, everybody. They all got together and they put up this poster. They put it in classrooms. They taught it to children. It was up at the Jenny Craig. It was up at the Weight Watchers. <laughs> Little tiny bit, salt and fat. A vegetable if you can find one. Maybe a fruit. A bunch of meat. A lot of milk. And then, if you want to be healthy, six to ten <laughs> servings of bread every single day. And while over the course of the decade that followed the invention of this evil pyramid, America gained a trillion pounds. There was a blissful six-month window in which everybody went on a diet, and the diet food was pasta carbonara. <laughs> And people were just slathering their bread with butter and enjoying it, and then eating a low-fat snack wells for dinner, for dessert, just crushing it. It was actually hard to hit your six to 10 servings of carbs every day, but if you tried, maybe at dinner, if you added a second baked potato, you could get there. And everybody was happy. It was the only time, all right? Pets.com, food pyramid. Will and Grace. It was a, it was a heck, wait, that's too late. F- uh, Frasier. AOL. The internet was a place you were excited to go. Not that, not a, not a, not a proving ground for amateur Goebbels. <laughs> which is what it is now. And then, after America gained a trillion pounds, Michelle Obama comes along and replaces the food pyramid. (laughs) And it turns out you don't need six to 10 (laughs) servings of pasta. 
a day. In fact, it's the opposite of what you should eat to be healthy. In fact, years later, we find out that if you just cut that part of the pyramid and throw it in the fucking garbage, you look like Chris Evans. <laughs> and long before a financial crisis devastated our economy and nobody went to jail, Long before George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, who Biden tells me is a decent man, <laughs> took us to a war of choice that's <laughs> that burned a trillion dollars and led to the deaths of untold hundreds of thousands and no one was held accountable. Long before any of that, the first sign of American decline was the fact that all the doctors got together, got America fat, and walked away scot-fucking-free. <laughs> No doctors went to jail. I don't remember the name of the very kind of nice lady who was Surgeon General under Bill Clinton, but I don't believe she ended up in shackles. Somebody remember the name? Jocelyn fucking Elders. Is that right? I think that's right. Oh, okay, this next one is about tour also. Steph from Instagram is asking um, about how much food was consumed on tour, who ate the most? I mean, if you guys, that's a little weird. If you guys have like a what the best thing you ate, I'm adding that to the question too. I ate so much between Charleston and New Orleans. It was catastrophic. <laughs> um, I felt so gross when I got back to LA. I feel like I am now a bear uh, emerging from hibernation. What did we have? We had before. I'm like had, one of those polar bears that they seen rummaging around Siberia. I had a fried oyster po' boy before the show in New Orleans, which was delicious. Ooh. And then I think on our day off is like I had I, I had a hurricane and queso and chips. <laughs> that is that was <laughs> I saw so the ends gross. of that. that was, Whoa! I can't believe you had a hurricane. Congrats. What? So stupid. <laughs> I just want. I. It's so sweet and so awful. I want to tell you the most <laughs> shameful. Like, I don't, I'm too old to drink this anyway. I want to talk about the most shameful thing that I did. So the most shameful thing that I did is it wasn't I love food in New Orleans. I, it wasn't the, you know, fried green tomato egg Benedict with crab cake that I had in Charleston the morning I left. Uh, it wasn't uh, the oyster and shrimp po' boy I had uh, when we arrived. It wasn't the uh, other oyster po, po' boy I had for dinner. It was the 2 a.m. stack of chocolate chip pancakes I ate at fucking IHOP in New Orleans. What? How despicable of me <laughs> to pursue that option at that hour. Wow. It was a bold choice. disgusting. And you know what happens when you eat a stack of chocolate chip pancakes from IHOP at 2 in the morning in New Orleans? You wake up and that food doesn't, re doesn't register. You just have another meal when you wake up. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. When I woke up, we went to Stanley's in New Orleans is the best brunch. Remember we went there when I, when I had my birthday great. in New Orleans? It's so good. And I went you... to a place called Joey K's in the Garden <laughs> District where I also had a fried oyster po' boy and some jambalaya and some french fries. Oh, my God. <laughs> and a little bit of catfish off my dad's plate, one shrimp off my mother's plate. Why didn't your parents came? That's fun. Yeah, they were there. I ate so much. <laughs> All right. Last question. Um, the viewers at home want to know what you guys are doing for Valentine's Day. I think John, Tom, and I are going to have a nice quiet night in. <laughs> uh, one other thing I just want to flag. In Durham, at the airport, on the way out of town, after having lunch before we went to the airport, I got macaroni and cheese from the Carolina Pit Barbecue place in the Durham Airport good. and good? added hot sauce to it and ate it, ate it in, the, in the gate area. I wasn't even hungry, Priyanka. <laughs> so, you're not, so you're not eating for Valentine's Day? Oh. No, so but we're doing Love It or Leave It. You sampler? Oh, I love a Whitman sampler. I love a Whitman sampler. Oh, love a Whitman sampler. Can't go wrong. Throw the cherry cordials out. Otherwise, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Who's leaving those cherry cordials? It's like a... Disgusting. It's like a NyQuil explosion in your face. You know? Awful. Was there any other questions for him? No, that's okay. it. That's our stream. That's our live stream for today. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Stay hungry. <laughs> <laughs>